What's up everybody and welcome back to the shop for Tools Day, my second favorite day of the week. And today we are gonna talk about probably, not probably, the most important tool for any good carpenter. So let's get right into it. So the most important tool that I have on my job site is my set of tool bags. And it's something that has evolved over the years. I've started with the cheapest of cheap bags. And as time has progressed, I've realized that it's really worth going out and buying a custom set of bags that fit your needs. So what I did was I got hooked up with Diamondback tool belts. They've been around for about 25 years and they make an awesome tool belt that is lifetime guaranteed. It's made out of some crazy thousand D triple layered uh, fabric that basically is the same material that they use in car seat belts and they fit really well. They are made 100% in the USA. They use a Cobra buckle, which basically is the same buckle that is used in all high-end mountaineering and parachuting apparatus. And it's probably the toughest, most reliable buckle out there. They use a really cool system for attaching and removing your bag. So if you wanna configure them differently, depending on your job, it's real easy to remove them, but they stay on very secure. So that's kind of a plus, even though I don't, I don't move my bags too often. I'm kind of a, I do such a niche job that they always stay pretty much the same. But for you guys out there that might remodel and go from job to job doing different things and you want a different setup, that's a really nice handy feature. Now, all good things usually do not come cheaply. Uh, a set of bags like the ones I am wearing, the current configuration, it's around just under $400 US, so instantly I know a lot of you are thinking, oh my goodness, but listen, these bags, there's a ton of stories out there that guys have been using these bags for 15 plus years, and when you do the math, I was buying almost every season, I would go out and buy a $100 bag from the local you know, home store, and it would get me through a year. It was good, but that was about it. So you gotta look at the long term, and a good set of bags is money well spent. Now let's get into what this video is all about, and it's not not just my bag, but I had a lot of people asking, you know, kind of, hey, go through what is in your bags. Like, what do you use every day on the job site? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's kind of pick through all the things that are in my bag. Currently, this came right from the job site today, so it's fairly accurate. All right, let's get right into my left side, which I don't know if that's your dominant or weak side, but it's my fastener side. This is where I'm gonna keep most of my fasteners because I can go in with my left hand, hold my nail, pull out my hammer. So that just makes a lot of sense for me. So definitely think about how you like to work and there's nothing wrong with using a cheap pair of bags to start off with before you go and invest. Figure out the flow of your work style. Starting at the top, we've got my tape measure and I've always been a Fat Max guy. I've tried a lot of different tape measures and it always seems to me that I come back to a Fat Max. 35 footer is I know big for a lot of guys, but out there on big post frame sites, I'm always needing more than a 25 footer. So uh, as much as I don't like the weight of a 30 35 or the size of it. This is usually my go-to. Now the next thing I've got here is my speed square. This is actually a prototype speed square and if you saw real close here it is actually one of five. This is the first prototype that Mark Martinez ever produced and it's a fully titanium square with a removable aluminum edge here. It's got the uh, the level bubble here which you know sometimes you think might be a waste of accessory or a waste of time. It's actually come in quite handy. I never thought I would use it and I have been using it. Uh, a lot of features about this square. That's like a totally different video. Just know that this is a game changing square, but once again, good tools do not come cheap. That's about a $250 square. Yeah, it's expensive. Let's go ahead and pull out the rest of my tools here on this side. I always just carry, I started carrying one of these uh, personal laser distance measurers and it's just super handy because even though a Fat Max has a great standout, it doesn't do 20 foot. And so we're always having to kind of get measurements between post or whatever. These are super accurate, lightweight, and the prices have come down. So this is a great accessory to throw in your tool belt. Now, the next thing that I got over here is 
first off, I'll tell you, I've got on my tool bag setup, this is a prototype grande bag. Now, when I first started wearing diamond bag, I told them I wanted the biggest bag that they had, which was the Wrangel XLs. And that's what I'm still rocking on my right side. But on the left side where I've got most of my fasteners, I wanted a pouch that I could really just throw a ton of fasteners in and get my hand in there with easy access. So not the best pouch for a trim carpenter probably, but if you're out there doing rough framing, it's perfect. Literally, this is like a whole bag of screws that we use for side steel or for our roofs. And then usually underneath that, I'll keep, I'm not gonna pull them all out, but uh, as you can see, I mean, this thing is like a cavern. You can just dig in here and, and pull out a ton of fasteners. The belt does a really nice job supporting that weight up here on your hips versus, you know, down where it just wears on you. I don't even wear shoulder straps usually at all. So sometimes in the winter I will, just because your baggy clothes, you can't really get a good cinch around your waist. But other than that, you know, you can throw a lot of weight in these bags and that's super important because you wear them all day. Let's see what else we've got in here. We've got a pretty good size pouch up front that usually I just keep some 20 penny ring shanks. And these are, are gonna be our go-to nail on the post frame site. Uh, 16 pennies don't cut it. And we definitely need something a little bit larger diameter for that sheer strength in our buildings. Now, the other pouch I've got back here is usually just going to carry a bunch of small trim nails. And these trim nails are just a shingle nail, but we use them to put all of our trims on and place things where we want them. So usually a pouch full of those. So I got one more thing back here, something that I actually usually forget I even have because it really doesn't weigh a lot. This is another prototype. If you haven't already figured it out, me and Mark are buddies and uh, I might be a guinea pig for him because he'll send me out some of these things when he starts thinking about them. This was like super early prototype. It's a steel nail puller and he's already got a stiletto or no, a stiletto like. And if you see it, you will think that looks like a stiletto. Well, a little backstory real quick. If you didn't, I'll go ahead and tag up here when I went out and met Mark for the first time. He is the creator and um, past owner of Stiletto Tools, which was the original titanium and he sold it, started his own uh, company called Martinez Tools. So that is where you're seeing my hammer and this nail puller. They're coming from Mark. He was inspired obviously from stiletto because that's what he created first and has since you know tried to make something better so i do carry a nail puller i don't however use it very often uh usually because if i'm using this it means i mess something up and i've got a pole and nail other than that you know i got a pencil slot here that i uh usually keep a pencil in to be honest i usually throw a couple pencils in my pouches because they're always disappearing uh let's go ahead and go on over to the other side of the pouch here where i've got most of my tools i'm going to start at the bottom of my pouch and the first thing I've got is a Tajima chalk reel. And honestly, I have gone through hundreds, probably, eh, maybe not hundreds, that's exaggerating, uh, maybe 15 or 20 different chalk lines over the last 10 years. And by far the best one, it does a great job laying a nice clean line. And I've just not had any issues with it. Probably a $25 chalk reel. So not cheapest once again, you know, you start at the bottom, you learn what you like, what you don't like, and then you go out and buy the best tool you can afford feel like that's what I've done for the most part. So there you go, Tajima, probably the best chalk reel I've used. Next up, we've got a set of gloves and these are some cut level five gloves. Actually, I don't even wear gloves that often. However, we're currently doing a remodel job where we're removing all the old steel and putting new steel up for the client, which means a lot of cut edges, a lot of screw holes. And just to be safe, it's always good to have a pair of gloves. If nothing else, keep your hands a little bit clean for lunchtime, right? All right, what else we've got here? We've got a little torpedo level from Stabila. Got nice magnets on it. If you guys have seen some of my build series videos, these are great to mount on the side of a bracket when we're setting them in our concrete or really just about anything, you know, real quick and handy. Uh, I don't use this to level up our buildings, but it is nice and handy just to throw it in and you got plenty of room in these pouches, so why not? Randomly, I've got a couple uh, screwdrivers, a flathead, a Phillips drive, nothing special here. Probably the cheapest ones I could find because these are always disappearing and I haven't found a real desire to spend big money on something that I know is gonna disappear. Now, the next two things that I've got here are my Midwest snips. I've gone through, I've used a ton of different snips and I always go back to Midwest. They, they just work really well. They've always been good quality and they've lasted a long time. Obviously, we do a lot of metal work, a lot of trim detailing and a good pair of snips goes a long way. So Midwest, shout out, no sponsorship here, but I love your snips. Um, let's see, what else we got? So if you've noticed, I really don't have any fasteners on this side at all. But the other thing is this is the Wrangle 
XL bag on this side, and it's got a really nice cascade of bags that kind of go down. And what I like about that and don't like, first, what I do like, it keeps your bags close to your body. And so you're, when you're going through doorways or what have you, it helps keep that from hitting whatever you're walking by. And if you're inside doing a trim job, you don't want to be scarring up your uh, walls or your doors. So that is a nice feature. But at the same time, you really have to reach down sometimes and you're kind of bending over just to get to that last bag. So something to consider. It's worked pretty well for me. And you can just load up a ton of different items in all these different pouches. But then I've got my just a simple, you know, knife, a utility knife. I've always used this knife for probably the last five or six years anyway. It's been really good. It's DeWalt knife. You know, you got a little spot to store some extra blades here. And um, really, what else can you say about a utility knife? It does a good job cutting. A couple pencils, a uh, rev marker, got custom logo rev marker, got to have that. And uh, and then we got the last thing here, tool-wise, and that is kind of the infamous Martinez redheaded stepchild. This is a hammer that I collaborated with Mark, and they don't really go for sale often. He does random, you know, small Small production runs of this hammer specifically with the red head and the black handle so uh, you definitely want to tune in over on my Instagram channel if you do have any interest in one of these hammers because I usually let people know when I know that they're gonna be for sale and they usually go within 24 hours so pretty cool hammer this is a I do believe it's 15 ounce honestly I don't know that to be 100% sure you put it in your hand you use it and you will be surprised a lot of guys that come from an S-wing uh, your elbow will well, thank you and you'll never go back. What's really cool about this hammer is that it's got a, a changeable head so you can take the screw out, pull the head off, and let's say you want to put a trim head on. You can do that. Let's say you want to put one of Mark's new sledge heads on. You can do that. So once you buy into the titanium handle and the system, all you have to do is change the head and you've got multiple hammers that will last you forever. Mark's awesome. He's got a great warranty. He'll always take care of you too. So it's no big deal. You're going to have this for your lifetime. So once again, you put money in those tools that you know are going to be around for a long time and obviously your hammer your tool belt your speed square those are all tools that they last okay so let's see oh we got one more here this is a little hideaway pouch on the diamond back and it's not standard it's something that you can you know get or you don't have to get and usually let me see if i can just jam my hands in here i've got just a plethora of different bits and uh that's not even all of them you know sometimes just random i'm on a remodel job i already said that which means we just just come across you know somebody threw a random screw in that doesn't make any sense so usually I don't have this many bits but uh, that's what I use this pouch for is just all my different bits now, other than that, guys, you know, you do have a nice little hammer loop back here, but what I love is the option here for the hammer sleeve. You saw me pull the Martinez out. What is so nice about that is, let me just show you here real quick. When you slide that hammer in there, it tucks it here behind your bags and it's not flopping around. It's not getting in your way. It's not catching on things. It keeps it nice and secure. And I'm always climbing in and out of my scissor lift, up and off the walls, in the trusses, whatever I'm doing, this is how I have broken many hammers handles off of hammers by having them in a hammer loop like this back here and it catching on something and snapping or breaking or hurting myself. So I love the hammer sleeve. And if you haven't ever used one, I promise you, you would love it. But anyway, that is my pouches, guys. That is what I'm currently using, Diamondback. Um, I'm not saying these are the best tools. I'm hoping you guys will maybe drop some comments down below if there are any other tools that you think either A, I need to put in my bags every day, or B, maybe I should replace some of these with whatever you guys say is awesome because that's you know that's what it's all about too is uh, I'd love to hear your guys's feedback if you guys like this type of video if you want to see more of what we're doing what I do the types of tools I use go ahead and leave me a comment let me know what that is and uh, I'll do the best I can to, to make a video for you so thank you guys for joining in on this video and we'll see you next week on tools day